These short sticks could save your life. This is an Escrima or Collie stick, also known as Arnis. And I wanted you to see right from the start, if somebody has one of these and you have a couple of these sticks, you're gonna have the reach advantage. That means if he pulls out a blade and you're at danger of being sliced or stabbed, you have an option with a short stick like this that can keep him off of you. And that's the goal of this video. I wanna show you how to use these Kali Screamer sticks. Real simple, I wanna show you some of these patterns that I like to start with, but first, we're gonna warm up. I want you to hold the stick so that some of it's coming out of the end here. And that's the stick in his face. As you can smash him this way across the temple for self-defense, you can also stick this right there in the throat, into the teeth, into his eyes for self-defense. We'll go over that, but I want you to hold one in each hand and you're just gonna warm up, squeezing your stomach up and in, abs tight, put your feet together, and you're gonna go down and up once you get blood into the shoulders. Now to get in front of the obvious question, which is why would you wanna warm up before someone pulls a knife on you and attacks you, or you wouldn't wanna warm up, you wouldn't be able to. The answer is yes, you're right, if you were thinking that that the warm-up is silly for that reason, you're missing the point. The point is, you do the warm-up when you train, you train with the sticks. You might not have your stick with you, but you'll have your stick, stick fighting skill with you wherever you go. After you do this split motion here, I want you to do each one for about 30 seconds, I want you to go into a twisting motion with your wrists. And as you do that twisting motion with your wrists away from your body, keep your hand closed this way. Don't do this, that's cheating. Cheating's bad in this because if you hit something, like another stick or his head for self-defense, the stick's gonna fly out of your hands. So keep your hands closed and work on your flexibility. After you go forward for 30 seconds, reverse it, pulling it back for 30 seconds. Keep your stomach up and in, abs tight. Keep your chin tucked a little bit, breathe through the nose, work on good technique during your training. After you do this for 30 seconds, I want you to go back down and up, but when you go down, this time you're gonna spin, and when you come up, you're gonna spin away. So you spin forward and in reverse on the way back. I'm gonna do that and that. And this is gonna to start to increase the ability to strike, the speed and the power of your strikes, just this little twisting motion as you go down and up. And after you do that for 30 seconds, you can start to add more spins so that your wrists become more flexible and your forearms become more powerful. So do that spinning down, spinning up. And if you want to get really fancy, start on your shoulder, do one hand at a time, going out. And as you go out, you maintain this angle. That's your striking angle. Your first striking angle that comes off your shoulder goes through his temple to the other side of his jaw for self-defense. Good morning, Michael. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. So you do one hand and then the other one. Once you get that motion down, if you wanna get really fancy, you start to do them at the same time. You might not be there yet, but work up to it. Now that I'm back to teaching over there at the elementary and middle school every day, I'm reminded to remind you, if you can't do it, say, I can't do it yet. Yeah, Muhammad says, double stick combat. But adopt that growth mindset philosophy. You can't do it yet. Stop limiting yourself with your words. Think about the words that come out of your mouth and choose better ones when you need to. So you're going out, two, and now you're warmed up. Put one stick to the ground, put the other stick on your shoulder. This is my right hand, I'm gonna have my right foot forward. You're gonna strike through, coming through from his temple to his jaw or his neck to the other side of his body but you're gonna have this basic first angle coming through the body. You're gonna practice this over and over. You're gonna to start to go a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. Michael asked what size are these Kali sticks. Michael, I'm pretty sure these are 28 inches. There's a link below if you need a pair of Kali or a Screama sticks or knee sticks. These are very inexpensive. These are made out of rattan, which is a grass. It's extremely strong and it's pretty lightweight. So they move fast through the air and they'll last you a long time for probably less than 20 bucks. Thank you for that last comment about appreciation. I appreciate that. But make sure you do a full strike. You can strike and stop, you can slice through. Both are correct. 
but we're going to warm up with this striking coming through. Once you do angle one, go from the other shoulder for angle two. Now notice that this is coming in front of my body, from my body to my target. I want to always fight from behind the stick. I want you behind your sticks for self-defense, especially if there's a blade involved or you have multiple attackers or you have to really defend yourself. You want to fight from behind your sticks and not do this and not do this. These are too wide. It's out of the center line of your body. So keep it in the center line. That's angle two. Do angle one and angle two together. Coming through. Angle three is going to start down here at your right hip and you're going to bring it up and across. And when you do that, your palm turns up. And the reason for that is so that when you run into his body for self-defense, it's going to be stuck in your hand. It's not going to come out of the web of your thumb. If your hand is turned the wrong way and you run into him, your finger is going to pop off just like the old G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip. Your hands just turn into rubber. But if it's palm up, you're going to go through that target and be able to hold on to your stick. Worst thing that could happen, well, not the worst. One of the bad things that could happen is he takes a stick away from you and hits you with it. So don't lose your stick. Make sure your palm is facing up when you do angle three. Angle four is coming from your left hip and up and see how this is still in the center line of your body. You want to keep it always between you and him. Fight from behind your stick. You can always get the other hand on it, shove him back, bring that in, smash through his teeth, box his ears, stick that down right between his throat for self-defense, in the middle of his throat. So the angle four is here. You're doing this over and over. Now I want you to put the first four together for 30 seconds and pay attention to fighting from behind your stick. And as you get warmed up, start to push faster. You should take your breath away a little bit. You should be moving as fast as you can in practice. So when you need it for real, you're able to hit hard and hit fast. Now, if you have something you can strike, then you can strike that. If you don't, just practice in the air. The practice in the air is gonna be very good, even if you don't have something to hit. Two down, two up, after 30 seconds, Go into your opposite hand and start with your first angle all over again. Hello, Mark. Good to see you. Airguns Anonymous, welcome. Thanks for being here. And the Seventh Son, welcome. Thank you for your super thanks earlier. I appreciate that. So coming from here to here, I want to show you the 18. Sorry, drop that one. That's the 18-inch Tanbo, Okinawan style. And that looks like another 10 inches, so we're going to call that 28 inches, but I just had that there for reference. Uh, Tombow is a great weapon too, especially one of these thick oak ones. You can roll that in, smashing the jaw for self-defense. So in your left hand, your opposite foot's forward, your left foot's forward, left hand, it's in your left hand. Again, 30 seconds, angle one, 30 seconds, angle two. Spending 30 seconds per angle is really gonna add up fast and make you good faster. Always keep that in the center line of your body when you go to your non-dominant hand, and I'm left-handed, so that's really my dominant hand. When we go to your non-dominant hand, make sure, hello, G. Carlton, it's good to see you. Um, did I see the 7-Eleven video in California? <laughs> yes, I did. I had to think for a minute which one you were talking about, because there's so many of these horrific attacks these days of just lawless people and the criminally insane randomly attacking the innocent. And, but I think the one you're referring to is when they fight back. So I did see that and then I saw, I was hoping, hello Patrick, good to see you. I was hoping that they wouldn't immediately charge them, them being the good guys who were defending their store, that they would not be charged. And I think we'll have to wait and see. Just for, for teaching that young he wasn't really a young man for teaching that man a lesson. This is my stuff. You have no right to just come and take it, right? You have the right to defend your life, your liberty, and pursuit of happiness, your ability to make money, put food on the table for your, your family, right? Hello, Mark. It's good to see you. All right. Now, in both hands, now you have that warm-up. That's just the first four angles. We'll go over horizontal strikes. Call that six and, or five and six. We'll call seven, vertical coming down on top of his head. And you can practice those too. But I want you to get a stick in each hand because I did want to show you 
the basic Sinawali pattern, which you might not use to fight with, but when you practice over and over again, it will make your strikes so much faster, so much harder. Your accuracy will improve just from practicing your Sinawali drill. Sinawali meaning weaving, weaving your arms. So I want you to have a stick on your, in your right hand on your right shoulder. I'm gonna show you um, not the most basic, but kind of the second most basic. You're gonna take your left hand, put that left stick on your right ribs. Sometimes I like doing that, it feels good. It's like a self-massage, self-flatulation, right? Smack yourself a little bit. But you put that on your shoulder, the other one comes under your arm, and then I want you to get it tight. So in other words, get your chicken wings down, and then practice angle one with your right hand. So angle one, and then back to your left shoulder. Your hand will cross your body. So angle one and across. Now the left hand is gonna come up and practice angle two across the body and back to the same side. It's on the left side. We're gonna do one and two again. So you're starting here, you're gonna come one and over, and then this one's gonna come out, that's angle two and back. And then the first hand, your right hand is gonna do angle two and back. Now I know I said angle one, angle two, angle one, or angle two. Think about angle one and angle two for this hand and angle one and angle two for this hand. And I know some of you guys, this is oversimplification, but it's always good to practice the basics. So keep it tight, chamber it in, put your right foot forward, make yourself a smaller target, strike all the way out, full extension, turning that shoulder and hip, bring it back to your shoulder, bring your left hand out, striking angle two and back, and then angle two for the right hand, and then that's gonna flip under and you're gonna be tight. Now what you did was you just completed three strikes on the right, or starting from the right side, and now you're on the left side in this chambered position, so you're gonna do angle one with your left hand and over, angle two with your right hand and back, angle two with your left hand and under. So I'm gonna go one, angle two, angle two, under, angle one, angle two, angle two, and under. You're coming back to this chambered position and every time you bring it over, I want you touching your shoulder. Now I, I overemphasize this because when I work with you in person, I often see this. And the more you go and the faster you do it, the more you're keeping your hands out here in front of your body. I like them in front of the body, but I also want you to get power and proper technique from the chamber. So bring it back to the shoulder. So as you're practicing, make sure it's all coming back into this chamber position as far back again as you can get it. So you get it really super tight. Hello, W9UFO, it's good to see you. Yeah, it says the basics are always good to go over. I, I find that no matter how long I practice, I fall in love with the basics more and more because everything is built on the basics, the foundation, has to be there. And when you're defending yourself, going, keeping it simple, as simple as possible with the fewest moves necessary and the least amount of complexity will save your life in getting hung up in the weeds of these overcomplicated fancy moves. And there are great fancy moves. Learn those in martial arts, all of the joint locks, pressure points, all of the throws and twists, uh, sweeps and all the cool things that you can do but keep those in the art side of it, keep those in the performance side of it, and then when it comes to self-defense, when it's your life, the life of your family, your freedom, your dignity, then keep it simple. Elbow strikes to the face, basic slashing strikes, thrusting strikes, this reverse hand thrusting strike, coming across here, two-handed smashing him through his teeth, boxing his ears, two hands, just like a bayonet strike or a rifle butt strike, coming down over top. Make it basic for self-defense, but practice these other fancy things, and then you'll be well-rounded. Alita, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. From here, you keep it tight. One, two, three. Always remember you have some sticking out the bottom. That's to stick in his eye. Later, you're going to learn how to trap and strip, taking away his blade or his stick. So from here, for self-defense. Two, three, and under. Whoop, it's in the way. One two, three, and under, two, three, and then as you start to get it, you wanna make it continuous, and then you wanna start to bend your knees a little bit, and you wanna start to move around a little bit, and then you can even change levels a little bit, and you can even go lower with your strikes, 
a little bit. Try not to hit that bag there. Bring it back up in the middle, striking his wrists, his ribs, back up to the head, and just over and over and over again, and go for two to three minutes doing one basic pattern. And if you have something you can strike, you can start to strike like this. If you've ever been in an FMA class with a senior, senior FMA instructor, you'll see they do this. That's kind of an inside joke. Just to show that they don't have to see what they're doing because their pattern is so solid and they know what they're doing. Anyway, some of you got that joke. For the rest of you, just know that in the FMA world, they either find that funny or insulting. I guess it depends on your sense of humor. So you're coming up here. Now we're gonna modify, you're gonna modify this basic pattern and you're gonna do the first, starting from your chamber, the first one is the same. The second one, instead of coming here to the head, is gonna come here to the knee. And that is angle three. Right, one, two. Oh, that's angle four, sorry, that's angle four. So that's angle four with my left hand. So I'm starting here, you're starting here chambered, one and over, two, going to the leg, and this comes back into the same exact spot. From the right hand, you're gonna do this exactly the same, that's angle two and under. So one is the same, this becomes four, angle four, and then angle two, angle one, angle four, angle two, angle one, angle four, angle two. And you're doing basically the same pattern, but you've added a different level. And I go to head, and then the lower part of the body. I'm just remembering that that second strike is going low. And so you can start with the first angle, or the first pattern of Sinawali, and when you're ready, you can start to use the bottom hand. And if you have a partner to do this with, it's really fun. It's good for your brain. It's going to increase your brain elasticity or plasticity, meaning that you're going to be young, younger, more flexible in your thinking and in your body. And it's a great workout. It's going to increase your overall fitness, flexibility, speed, strength. But most importantly, for our purpose, it's going to make your strikes so much faster. And I want to talk about those self-defense strikes to finish. The first one I'm going to have you do from this position is point it and grab it with the other hand and then simply thrust. Because as I said before, I want to put it between me and him, especially, especially sorry, my words are a little mushy today. I've been out in the sun for the first half of the day. And then as soon as we're done here, the rest of my day. I'm out in the sun, but I'm excited. I'm teaching civics today. I have a marching little cadet corps, and we're going to learn civics, starting with the three branches of government. Some of the kids know it, and some of them never heard it, but I believe you should know about your country. So from here, in this position, your hands are up, your back up, you're too close. If you've got a stick like this in your hand, I don't think he should be coming in, but he might. And it's got to be here. It can't be out here. You can whack him there really fast. You can bring it through if you want to, but I want you to also... Think about straightforward thrusts because it's the closest distance between two points is that straight line. You've heard that over and over again, but it's so true. And then with this other hand on it, as you thrust and you move your body through that target, you're hitting his center line either here in the solar plexus, crushing that cartilage, knocking his wind out. Probably his lunch is going to come with it. This is a fatal strike for self-defense. Be careful with that. And if you have to, if it's life or death, especially if he's got a blade, you go for in the fight like that. You want to hit first. You want to be that first mover or straight in to the face. Now, from this position, um, Michael asked, did I ever call, cover a sprawl or do you strike as your opponent enters? If it's life or death situation, he has a blade, I'm not sprawling. Um, and I think you know, know that. The sprawl is basically comes from... And I've got a ground bag there. This idea that you would push one or both legs back, uh, usually going to the side first, and then you can kick that leg back if you need to. And then your hands are here, starting in this flinch block position, coming into his shoulders or onto his back and driving him into the ground. 
just a bit, I, my, I think, Michael, it just depends on the situation. The question you have to ask yourself is what can you remove or destroy for self-defense? If I'm fighting with somebody, if I've made the mistake and I get myself in a situation where it's a, an ego thing, then, yeah, you would definitely sprawl. Um, I learned how to sprawl uh, in judo. I learned how to sprawl wrestling in high school. I know how to sprawl really well, and I've never been taken to the ground unless it was in a competitive event. But I've never been taken to the ground for self-defense. I've always been able to stay on my feet. And, I, and that brings up a great question, or a great point, because you hear, especially from the jiu-jitsu world, the BJJ guys, this idea that all fights go to the ground, which is completely untrue. And I talk to my law enforcement friends all the time. Their goal is not to go to the ground unless they want to take it to the ground. That doesn't mean they don't always uh, or sometimes go to the ground because they do. Sometimes they'll lose their footing. Sometimes they've got uh, uh, you know, a younger kid who knows how to go to the ground, a high school football player, you know, had played in football in high school or knows how to wrestle or knows some, some MMA. And then they find themselves on the ground. But a cop does not want to wrestle around on the ground with all of that gear that could kill him or somebody else within reach, reach of that criminal so, or person he's apprehending or whatever. So their goal is to take control of the head and put the head on the ground or put the head on the roof of the car or whatever it is or the, the front of the car. But the point is not all fights go to the ground. And in self-defense situations and when I was in law enforcement, I never had to go to the ground. But that's because I know how to move my body in a way and use my significant size advantage over most people to not have to go to the ground. I'm only going to the ground if it's here on the mats, right? And I don't even do that as much as I used to because I'm getting older and it takes more to go to the ground and get back up than it used to. But having said that, if he has a blade or if you don't know what else he has, he might have a gun, he might have other things. In Tim Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer, he makes a really great point he says, never slap a killer. And if you've ever seen Tim Larkin's podcast, he talks about it all the time. And the basic idea behind that, you don't know what he's capable of or what he has on him and where this is going to go. So if you get into one of these, like in that Missouri thing that we had for so long ago, uh, or, or not that long ago, where there was a big brawl and there were a lot of really poorly, <laughs> there was a lot of bad fights. A lot of people that didn't know how to fight were in there fighting each other people trying to pull each other apart. That's, that's, that's a different scenario, right? That's just a bunch of grown men and women um, who, who need to grow up, who need some sense of purpose in their life, who probably need to go to church, in my opinion. But in the, in the case, and you see these all the time too, that people get into a road rage incident. One person pulls out this, shoots the other over nothing, right? You never know what they have. So before you go spouting off the mouth and and balling up your fist and try and fighting because your ego is bruised, you have to remember you never slap a killer. So if you're not committed to using violence in the in a self real life or death self defense situation, using ultimate violence, if you're not committed to that, then you never you should you should find you should learn how to breathe, smile and and make apologies and say hey I don't I don't understand you know I'm sorry that you feel that way you know and, and then be able to extract yourself. If it seems like that's not going to happen and they're pressing the fight or they've got some of their hands in the pockets, you're afraid something's going to come out, I would stick this here right through his face and then I want you to smash like that and not sprawl. And don't ever sprawl with somebody with a knife. You'll just end up getting uh, stabbed to death on the ground. All right, so from this position, push, two-handed thrust, and then two-handed this way and your target is his teeth or his nose or his eyes or his throat, but you're using your whole body behind it, like you're in a push-up position, smashing him back. From here, after you thrust here, you smash here, I want you to push the sides of your sticks. And it could even be your fists. Your fists are now closed around your stick. It's almost like holding a roll of quarters or holding that makiwara, or not the makiwara, that's the thing you punch. The um, yawara, the palm stick, holding a palm stick or a kubatan. And now you're smashing here. Once you do this five or six times, Bend your knees to get lower than he is. Drop your center of gravity lower than his center of gravity. Now you have the advantage. And then unload by standing up, unloading the springs, your legs, and thrust up and through his body. So from this position, point, thrust, pressing the fight, pushing, bend, and thrust for self-defense. 
And that's a routine or a combination of strikes that I'd like you to practice. So from here, one, two, three, five or six of these, bend, thrust, and then if you need to, you can finish with angle number seven. So angle one, angle two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I always like to come up, finish with a quick under the chin or into the face popping there. So if you want to practice that one too, practice these two combinations. First combinations from the shoulder, get the stick into the front hand, take control of it, press. Notice that you're moving forward the whole time, bend and push. Second set of combinations, second set of combination strike. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then finish. And this is just a habit from fighting with NYC X Prepper, good to see you. Fighting with these, when you're coming up here, this gets stuck, there's a little twist, and then that helps you pop your hand back out of it. Hello D, MC, good to see you. Air Guns Anonymous, thanks guys. I appreciate you guys talking to each other in these chats especially. And um, when you go into the comment section below, and you make your comments and then comment on other people's comments, that really helps this channel grow. So I appreciate when you do that. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. So if you like this content, if this is the kind of stuff you wanna work on, we'll work on more of it. I'm starting to get a rhythm. I started back to the school. I have literally six different jobs I'm doing there. And my favorite one, the number one that we've had so much success with is securing the school. So securing the teachers and the staff. And so my mind is so deep into how do you keep the bad guys away from the school? And we did so much great stuff this summer. Um, but now that that's kind of in, in motion, everything's there, my schedule's kind of opening up. So I'll be doing more of these live streams. I tried to do a bunch of live streams last week, but somehow I kept getting kicked out of YouTube. I don't know if it was the update of the phone or whatever, but now that it's back and they're letting me do them again, you'll see me more often, usually around this time, around lunchtime, that's when I have time. So if I don't have a private lesson here, then I'll be working with you and we'll get these done. I really appreciate the super thanks when you guys give me those super thanks. That really helps. I'm trying to increase the income from the channel so that I can pay my rent here. And uh, as I take more responsibility there, I have less time here. And so it makes it more valuable when you guys participate in the virtual uh, dojo and you guys help me out that way. I really appreciate that. All right, uh, BMO Creative, just subscribe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. Marcus, hello from Finland. Marcus, good to see you. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna run over. I've got Cadet Corps next. I told you I'm excited about civics. If you don't know, if you live in this country and you don't know the basics of the government, how the government works, look it up. Wherever you live in your country, make sure you know the basic civics of your country. Be a good citizen. You guys are awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.